Hey everyone, welcome back to Mini Bike Mike's Garage. So we're on to video number two of what do you want to call this bike? The burn bike, the fire bike, the thick paint bike. I'm not really sure what we want to call it. Uh, if you didn't see it, there is another video on this where we walk around. It was a roller. I walked around it, kind of described it. We looked at it, looked at the parts that we're going to put on it. And then we talked about how bad this paint was. And in the end of the very first video, I showed the results of getting all the paint off of one side of the frame. And then we did a little contest to see, let you guys guess, how did I get that off? How did, that, how did I get that, remove that paint? And had, had a winner that came up and he knew that, or he guessed that I used a, an acetylene torch. And basically I just burnt the paint off, heated it up, burnt it, and then took a wire brush and just scraped it off. And that's how I got the paint off of the other side. But I saved this side because I wanted to film it, let you guys see the process. So here we go. I'm going to bring you in. We're going we're gonna to see if we can't burn the paint off of this side of the frame. I apologize. I'm sure the audio and the video out in this warehouse part of my shop is not that great. But we'll do the best that we can here. That green top layer, that is some thick paint. Ha, huh, there's I think we hit some bondo. There's a, a dent right there. That's probably enough for you guys to get the gist of what I'm doing. I'll go ahead and finish that up. But if you see right here, that's Bondo, or I guess filler. Bondo's the brand name. But there must be a, uh, a dent right there, and they filled it. Don't know how well all that. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's on camera pretty well. You can see that that, that really brought that down to the bare frame. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. I've got to go ahead and burn the rest of this off and, and take a wire brush and scrape it off. And then I've got to do the same thing to the, the front forks and swing arm and get this all down to where we're ready to paint it. All right, so after about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes worth of work on that, this is where I'm at. Is it perfect? No. Is it meant to be perfect? No. Like I said uh, in the first video, if you watched it, this is going to be a 10-footer, but uh, I think we have it at least down to where we can get some decent paint on it, and it you know won't look too bad. You won't see uh, you know see all the imperfections of the old paint underneath it. So, uh, 
got to take and do the swing arm and the front forks now and get them hopefully in the as good a shape as what I have this. And then I think we'll be ready to put some paint on it. All right, here we go. Remember, this isn't gonna be perfect. Probably made this stand a little too tall. Well, there's a coat of primer on it. Is it perfect? <laughs> Not even close. But like I said, it'll, you know, at a glance, I'm not even gonna get the camera very close because I don't, I don't want it to, I don't wanna disappoint you guys, but it'll look okay. It's not, it's not gonna be a show bike by any stretch. I probably could have cleaned the frame a little bit better. I've got a spot underneath right in here that I'm not happy with. And I've got some grinder marks on this frame. You, know, you can see, you can kind of see the, you know, where I got too aggressive with that when I first tried to use that flap wheel grinder. Yeah, don't do that, fellas. That's, that was a mistake. But hey, it already, in my opinion, looks way better than what it did when we started so i'm pretty happy we'll let this dry and start putting some red on well it's been about uh 10 minutes is that long enough to wait i'm too impatient let's throw some red on it so for you guys this is what i'm using the metal specs retro red i get it I think actually I bought it uh, originally down at AutoZone. I don't know if they still carry. I think they do still carry it. They carry the red and the blue. All right, here we go. Well, what do you think? Ah, my little run, no, maybe that's not a run. There's one coat, we'll, uh, we'll hit it again. It's red, so. All right, I'm on to can number two. I think I'll put one more coat on all the parts. Uh, I did add the shocks for you sharp-eyed rascals out there. Yeah, I, I did forget the shock covers and I just taped up those new shocks that I got off of Amazon. I didn't feel like taking them apart, so just taped them up and we're gonna spray those. But let's put one more coat on it, let that dry, and then maybe we'll look at hitting it with some clear. This is my stopping point for today. I've got a couple coats of red on everything. 
Now I realize I messed up the chain guard. I haven't uh, modified the it to fit the life and engine yet. So that'll, that'll might get a repaint or a little bit of touch up at some point, but everything else is, I think good enough and ready to go. Frames, not too bad. You know, it's, it's not there again, not perfect. Like I said, but definitely better than the green that we had. Uh, the front forks, like like right here, that's that's pitting in the steel, and I didn't do any kind of filling with any kind of you know body filler or anything to make it smooth. I just cleaned all the old paint off and sprayed it. So, all right, I'm gonna let that set up good and dry, and uh, get the decals on the frame, and then hit it all with some clear. So. All right, are you guys about ready to see me mess this all up? First thing I'm gonna do is I put a line or put a mark at about five and a quarter inches from this little brace that's welded on right there. And that, and then I'm going to line up the corner of this decal with that little line that get hopefully gets me somewhere close to the right forward and back spot on these decals if you'll notice the stripes are they kind of have a curve to them you want the inside of the curve to go to the front of the frame uh, if you don't and then you try and line this up your your decal will look like this with the honda running the wrong way we want to try and get the honda you know somewhat Kind of centered in this area the other so i'm going to start by kind of curling up that edge in my mark because the other thing you got to make sure you do is get enough decal up and underneath this. So when you put the little chrome trim piece on, uh, where's the little chrome piece? I don't have it here in front of me, I guess. Thought I did, don't know what I did with it. Anyway, when you put this piece on, you wanna make sure that it's covering the decal. You don't wanna see, you don't wanna see a gap between the decal and that little chrome piece right there. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. I typically try and make sure that I take a tape measure and the A is about an inch and a half from the ridge here to the top of the A. like we could lean it and then I think this is around the H is around two and a quarter yeah so I'm a little shy here and a little little much there so I think I need to rotate this decal just slightly and I've where I'm getting those measurements, I've taken them off of other original frames. That looks pretty close. Yeah, I think I can live with that. Now I don't, you know, unlike a lot of other guys, I don't spray it with soapy water and, you know, do all that. I'm gonna put this on here dry. All right, let's go with that. I'm actually going to peel off get rid of that.
make sure that your decal is following get underneath that body line right there don't don't attach it down here and then have to have a gap here make sure that you're Okay. Do those look like they're straight? They do. Here we go. Let's find a spot where we can peel it off now. Sorry, I'm sure this is just riveting video. How's it looking? All right, right or wrong, it's on there. Yeah, I think that'll work. Well, while we're on this side, we'll go ahead and put the side badge on. Now, I gotta be kind of careful with these. These are aluminum. They're printed on aluminum, so you can crease them and bend them pretty easy. Um, I just go ahead and take the, the cover off the entire back. Something like that. Make sure you put the, the correct one on the right side. You always want the Honda wing, the point of the wing to be going forward. So the one that says Trail 70 and then tells you that this bike is for off-road use only. Don't ever ride it on a street. That one goes on the right side. The one that's got the big letters that say important about the fuel, that goes on the other side. Okay. Well, there it is. That's that's the first side, and that's half the battle. And now we got to go around and put the other side on 
and get it all the same distance and alignment and, and so forth. So let's, uh, let's take you around the other side. In my mind, the hardest part about this is you want to get the the white lines that are the edge. You want those to line up. You don't want to be sitting on the bike and looking down on the frame and have one decal off from the other. You you want them to be you know same spot and kind of going at the same angle. You don't. Okay, that looks. Decent, it looked like we're high on the back here. Not bad. That's not bad. I think I have it in line. Okay, does that look that looks that looks pretty decent. <sighs> All right, here we go. Take a deep breath, Mike. Sorry, I'm blocking the camera here. Sorry, guys. You saw me do it on the other side. I'm going to cut that off. One last time. All right, here we go. Again, make sure you get underneath the body line. Oh, I meant to say something. You may, there was a we found that Bondo that was right there. And fortunately, the decal, I think, is going to cover that up. I really didn't do a whole lot with that. I hope this is right, fellas. Yeah, there it is. You see, see where that bondo was at, where that dent. I just left it. I didn't try and push the dent out or do anything like that. Okay, there's that part. The H and the A look like they're okay. Looks like they're fine to me. Oh, 
All right. <clears throat> Awesome. I've obviously already put that on there. And then we talked about the little chrome piece. We're all right. All right, I'm going to let the table down so that we can get the camera to see a down version of so what it looks like when we're sitting on the seat. But there you go. I, I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. And obviously, it's already on there, so I'm not going to change it now. So awesome. I like it. And this is the view from up on top. So you can see what I was talking about, trying to get the white lines to match up. So when you're sitting on the bike, you know, you don't have a decal. One side is off from the other one. I, I did pretty decent. That left one might be a little farther forward than the other one, but I'm pretty happy with it. All right, everyone. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap today's video up there with the decals and, and the paint. I hope you enjoyed watching me burn that paint off with that torch. Uh, obviously, my methods are a little bit different, but man, was that some thick paint. And I just didn't want to spend days, you know, taking layer after layer off. Uh, I know there was some concern about, did I use too much heat and, and warp the frame or somehow damage it or just, you know, stress it in some way. I didn't really get the frame that hot. It got a little bit warm to the touch, um, but... It definitely did not get hot enough to do any damage. I just needed to heat the paint up enough that then I could take that wire brush and, and knock it off. And it worked out just fine. So I'm not really worried about the frame. It should all be good. Next week, we'll come back and I've got these parts that are ready to go. And we'll start bolting them, bolting them on to the frame and start completing the bike. I would say I've probably got another two, three videos, maybe. Maybe even four. I don't know. I'm not in any real hurry. I'm just kind of taking my time putting this thing together. But... Uh, I did want to get a video out today. It's actually Thursday morning, Thanksgiving Day 2023. So happy Thanksgiving. I thought, you know what? Not everybody watches football on Thanksgiving. Maybe you want to watch a mini bike mic video. Maybe you want to watch two or three mini bike mic videos. So enjoy yourself. Hope you have fun. Uh, I am incredibly thankful for each and every one of you that tune in and, and watch the channel and support me. Um, I don't really intend for this to be an educational channel. It's more just for entertainment. Um, I guess if I have anything I try and do on this channel and that's show that you guys can do this in your own garage. I'm not really doing anything, anything, anything special that each and every one of you couldn't do also. Uh, I know some people are, oh, I'm a little leery of this or a little, it's a mini bike. Jump in, have fun with it. You know, if it doesn't work out the way you want it, back up, punt, try it again, you know. So, but uh, I am truly thankful for each and every one of you that uh, you're always so nice. And I've, I've said this multiple times, you guys, you know, comments and everything. I get the occasional, you know, somebody that's disgruntled because I put a, a Chinese or, you know, a life and engine in a Honda frame or whatever. And I understand. I get that. But for the most part, it seems like, the people who subscribe and watch this channel on a regular basis, you're into the same bikes I am, and uh, you just in, you just enjoy watching somebody build them, and that's all I'm trying really trying to do is just provide some content for you guys to to enjoy. So anyway, have a great day, happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week on when we start doing another video and, and finishing this bike up.